ओके नाउ इट्स रिकॉर्डिंग सो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन और गुड इवनिंग डिपेंडिंग ऑन व्हिच टाइम जोन यू आर इन राइट नाउ सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम वी आर अरेंजिंग दिस एमएमआरएन समर मीटिंग सो पेंडेमिक हैज डिफरेंट इफेक्ट्स इन आवर लाइफ बट आई थिंक इन फॉर द एकेडेमिशियन वी हैव सम पॉजिटिव इफेक्ट लाइक दिस काइंड ऑफ वेब बेस्ड प्लेटफार्म टू शेयर आवर वर्क so this summer meeting is basically aimed for the undergraduate student who is working right now in uh, buet or some other institution in bangladesh so we try to uh, make an platform where everyone can come and share their idea and collaborate through this platform so we will try to continue this effort in the future so without uh, any more details i think we can start our program so our first program will be uh, the keynote session So the session chair would be Dr. Noman Hassan. I would like to hand over him to conduct the session. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Noman Hassan. I'll be the chair for the keynote session. Uh, for today's uh, keynote session, we have Dr. Uh, Shubhash Chandrakapa. Uh, I Have the privilege uh, to work with him. I consider him my uh, mentor, and he has influenced my work and career uh, more than uh, I can explain. So I'll keep this introduction really brief. I believe uh, Dr. Shah has a very interesting talk, and we will have a follow-up Q&A session. So without further delay, I would like to uh, request Dr. Shah to take over and present his work. Thank you. Can I stop sharing, Mama? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And uh, as Shukla said, um, good evening from here, from Australia. And. Uh, and thank you noman for introducing me yeah i had a very good time with noman when i just finished my phd i just uh, work with him and we produced couple of papers very good papers that time so today i would like to talk i wanted to talk about a lot of things today but i <laughs> because the time is limited um i'll try to um uh, talk just only one area that is the computational modeling of human respiratory airways so this is my small group and uh, this is actually uh, the top laptop that one is in uh, qt when i was in qt and the uh, next this two is at uh, eps this group is not very big it's small uh, as you know that um, uh for today's uh, presentation i have just divided my presentation into three parts one is the um particle transport uh and deposition in our lung and also the interaction with lung surfactant and mucociliary clearance in realistic uh ct scan based lung airways okay so this is three parts i'll try to go very quick uh this is the scenario in bangladesh in dhaka the air quality i just got couple of papers and i found there some newspaper that is just in the top uh in the world just um the bad air quality so you see that how this uh dust particle or some uh ultra fine particle how they interact with our lung so that is the most uh, of my research that's about so we can see this this figure is we, i took it in um, in september I, not me i just got it from a newspaper the, that time it was dhaka was in second worst uh, air quality index all right so only 59 good days Of, of air quality in 2016 in dhaka so over 80% of urban residents are exposed to air quality levels that exceed 
the World Health Organization limit. So if we could, if we could reduce 20% of exposure to urban air pollution, that would save about 1,200 to 3,500 uh, 3, lives annually and avoid 80 to 230 million cases of illness. So it's how bad it is. So in 2015 alone, Bangladesh had 122,000 numbers of death attributable to PM2.5. So PM2.5 is a very small particle that actually released mostly from um, the car exhaust pipe. So that is the most dangerous things. So the Dhaka ranks 44th in terms of PM2.5 pollution and 71 in the coarse dust pollution, that is PM10. And these are the sources of from where those particles actually come. So this is the brick industry. So we have a very big brick industry that produce about 58% of this uh, kind of particles. Now, uh, how we typically spend our time? Mostly we spend our time at home is about 42% and outside 8.23%. And we go out and come just about 10% uh, and office is generally 38%. Uh, and it is a very small information I want to give you that we breathe between 4.2 to 42.5 liter of air per minute. It depends only on uh, our activities, what we are doing based on that or also uh, the age, uh, age group, all right? So in this breathe, per day, do you know how many PM2.5 particles we inhale? So these statistics in Beijing, we inhale 220 million PM2.5 particles. All right, so that is the in the Beijing. So that means we are breathing around 22 million tiny PM2.5 particles per day. That means it is just over 2,500 per second. So earlier, like about um, uh, before 2000, year 2000, our computing facilities was not very good. And we did not have good uh, softwares to uh, process our CT scan image to get the nice, um, the lung geometry. So in that time, the researcher used to uh, draw some uh, less idealized geometry. As you know that our lung, our lung has 23 generation. So 23 generation means, uh, for, for example, the trachea. So this is called the trachea. Then it divides into two. And then that divide into two. That means every generation, they divide it into two. So we have 23 generations. So that means if you calculate the outlet, it will be about two to the power 22, 23. So after that, we have the alveoli. So, it is very, very hard to get uh, this um, total geometry because the, like, like the last part of this lung is very, very tiny. It's some micron size. So that's why we, we cannot get the, the whole lung. We, we cannot generate. So in that time, before 2020, they just got like one bifurcation geometry. All right? And then they try to find out if they release the particle in the inlet, why those particles actually uh, deposit. So they wanted to see where those particles deposit. And if it is a toxic particle, it can be, if it de deposit there for longer time, that then we can have some problem. So they did uh, that time before. But after that, so uh, they try to get um, the geometry. It is called um, realistic geometry from city scan data. So you see it is not very uh, straightforward. So you can see this is the uh, CT scan and you know how, to, how they do the CT scan. CT scan normally they put like, if it is a body, so they get a slice. So they take picture of the slices. And then uh, the, the more slice you have, the more uniform or good geometry you can get. Okay, that actually uh, depends on uh, the quality of the machine they do. Uh, but as you know, nobody do the CT scan if they are good, 
okay? So that means when they do the CT scan, they have some problem. They think they have some problem. After CT scan, they may be, they are healthy, but nobody do like for uh, research purpose or something. So that's why it depends on for which purpose they are doing the CT scan. So normally when they do the CT scan, we, we get like this kind of slices and then we add this, this line and we get this kind of geometry. And it is actually really, really uh, complex to get it. So we do, we use a lot of softwares and then we clean something and you can see this is the rib bone, which can protect our lung. And then we, we clean this one and we, at the end we get, get this, this, this one. So this portion actually our lung, lung is here. And it see it is very difficult to clean those things to get our lung airways. So when we clean these things, then we can see that some, some, some good part is also missing. So in that part, we need to do some reconstruction, right? Uh, so we have to follow all the trend and then we have to do some reconstruction. So based on this, we can draw about 12, 13 or 15 generation. We cannot get like a 23 generation. It's, 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 it's almost impossible to get the whole, whole geometry from here. So these are the things at the end, we get this kind of geometry. But, uh, and uh, this is a very, very um, new arrival geometry for me. <laughs> so this is very interesting geometry. So this is the lung. As you know that when you do the CT scan, we cannot do the CT scan from here to the end of the lung. We have to do the CT scan like part by part from here to there one part and from here to the end one part. So two parts, we have to do it. And in Australia, and I believe it is also uh, true in US to get the, like this kind of data from the hospital is very, very hard. You need a lot of ethical clearance, a lot of things. So uh, I try to get it from India. Uh, they also have ethical clearance. So I got it from them. And then uh, we are processing, but that was the resolution was not very good. So that's why I got at the end from China. So this is made in China. Okay, so this lung is made in China. And then our recent target is to uh, try to do some drug delivery through nose. Okay, so that is a very, very hot topic nowadays. As you know that the COVID-19 vaccine, the China already uh, maybe almost got the permission to, 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 to do that. And also Singapore, the National University of Singapore, they already, uh, 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 process all the uh, clinical trials and everything uh, for this COVID-19 vaccine uh, through the nasal uh, cavity. So for this one, we just got this part from India, all right? So from India, we are getting this part and from China, we're getting this part and then we join this together. So this is our whole line from nose, from mouth. So this is mouth, this is nose, and then we are getting the whole whole geometry. So, but we did not do any simulation yet. We just got the geometry. And we, we just use about six or seven softwares to generate the geometry. It's a very, very complex. So this one, uh, previously when we got um, the first of our CT scan, we are not very expert that time. And my PhD student only could extract the three generation. And we, we did some uh, research at that time. So this is very realistic but not many, not many generation here. Here, I don't want to give too much about uh, the technical things because I know you have a lot of uh, general audience here and also some other fields. So I don't want to give very details. If somebody is very interested, they can directly contact me. I can provide them uh, some information. But here we use our um, ANSYS software, the Pullen software. And uh, for this, Particular this case, we use 10 million unstructured dendritic cells, and we, we apply some very fine uh, boundary inflation on the this this boundary layer region, and uh, the boundary condition we applied on the surface. As you know that our lung surface is very very sticky. That surface is uh, we have uh, the the mucus. The mucus is very very sticky. So that means if any particles we inhale and hit the wall of our lung should be deposited. So that is the, uh, the, our assumption. I believe it is very valid assumption 
because it's very sticky. It cannot bounce back. So that is the boundary condition. We put like a um, trap, trap boundary condition. We have a trap boundary condition. That means if any particle hit the wall, it disappears. All right. So here he, it's all their velocity and everything uh, becomes zero. So we, we did some mesh dependent test here. This is the mesh dependent results. And here you can see, so three different, uh, sorry, 10 micron size particles we, we try for three different flow rates. So this is uh, 15 liter per minute, 30 uh, liter per minute and 60 liter per minute. So that means we consider three different activities. So 60 liter per minute means when are doing very hard like uh, uh, running or uh, like uh, doing some physical exercise. So that time is 60 liter per minute. And middle on is like our normal activities. We have like walking, solo walking, this kind of things. And 15 liter per minute flow rate means when we are resting, maybe sleeping or sitting. So these three uh, activities we, we consider and we, we use the 10 micron size particles. And remember, it is the same size particles. Is it called monodispersed particle. And as you can see here, for like uh, heavy activities, we can see most, uh, more particles actually deposited. So that means we are inhaling more and more particles are deposited. And we, what we did is we draw a line along this and then we quantitatively calculated how many particles are deposited. So these are the particles. We draw this line. So this is actually the vertical line. And this is the deposition density. That means how many particles are in there. So, and we can see, so we divide it into our uh, the different lobes. So it has like uh, this, this, how many going this way, how many going that way, this way, that way, this way. So there are three here, and there are two here. As you know that our lung is not symmetric. Our lung is very asymmetric. So it is like a right side of our lung. We have three, uh, three lobes and left side is only two lobes because of our heart. So our heart is on the left side. So that's why we have only two lobes there. So that's why we, we just uh, calculated the, all the particle deposition in just uh, some different, different lobes. And we, we just uh, quantitatively showed the numbers of the particles, the density of the particles. And then we tried different size of particles. So one micron, five micron and 10 micron size particles. And as you can see, uh, if the particle size is larger, the particle actually deposit the upper, upper airways. And if it is very large, they normally deposit on our nose here. So that actually our first barrier. They protect, uh, they protect the, uh, the particles. And then the rest of the particle go inside. So the well, larger the particle, they deposit on the upper air. And the smaller particle, they go to the deeper airways. Uh, you can see that proof here. So 10 micron size particles uh, with different flow rates, and this is the deposition efficiency. So that means you see that 10 micron size particles for 60 liter per minute flow rate is, is deposit high compared to one micron size particle. So deposit very low, their efficiency is very low. And also we showed different lobes. And then we moved to the, we got a very nice geometry. So this geometry we got from US. Uh, one of our uh, collaborators. But this geometry, this is 17th generation geometry, but it, still it is not uh, quite um, uh, a realistic. So this geometry is created based on some uh, biomedical data. So they just, from experimentally, they, they, they found the, the path of our airways and they got somehow some information and then using some software, they created this uh, geometry. But this is a very popular geometry. Um, our collaborators published a couple of papers from here, and we actually published a lot of papers from this geometry. So this is a very complex geometry. As you can see, there are 34 million unstructured dendritic cells we use in this geometry because it's very very complex. Okay. So and we we almost um, apply the same boundary condition here, and then we uh, calculated the pressure and the velocity control. Okay. So this is the pressure control. And this is the velocity control for 10 uh, liter per, sorry, nine liter per meter flow rate condition. And then what we did, we draw some lines for our five lobes. 
as I told before. So this is on lobe, this is another lobe, so five lobes. And for the engineer, uh, we, we normally try to calculate the, the pressure drop, like a heat exchanger. Like we try to find out uh, what is the pressure drop. So this way we try to find out the, the pressure drop. So we start from here and see which way how the pressure is dropping from here. Because as you know that the end of this, uh, this is 70th generation, but end of the generation like a 23 or 22, we have alveoli. The alveoli is very like, um, uh, that actually um, compress and expand. Okay, this kind of thing, there is no open. So that means our pressure is actually, when we uh, give more pressure here, then slowly the pressure actually drops at the end. Now the question is, is a very typical question here. You may ask me question after the presentation. Then what kind of good boundary condition we can apply in 17th generation? So this is a million dollar question. It's very, very hard because we cannot give very, we, we cannot make it totally open because it is not open. If we give open, it is not realistic because we have the, 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 the last part of the land is blocked. Although that's expanding and contracting, but it's still it's blocked. So that means we, we, we actually um, argue a lot with sometimes with the reviewers, what type of boundary condition you put at the end. So we, we, we try to find out some realistic boundary condition. We, we did not put the zero pressure, but we give some pressure based on our experience. That's the way we convince our uh, reviewers and we could publish papers. So this is the um, uh, one micron size particles and 10 micron size particles. As I said before, the, la the larger particle actually deposit on the upper airways. You see, this is called the cardinal angle, the, the bifurcation angle. So that is actually most important problem. So if we have, anybody has lung cancer on the lung airways, that should happen here. That means this, all the angles because particle deposit here and here the velocity is very small when the vicociliary clearance happen. So that means here, the most particle stays there for longer time. So if any um, toxic particle stays there for longer time, it can penetrate into the lung surfactant. So that is, that's why this, this is called the hot spot. And you can see here the 10 micron size particle deposit here and the one micron size particle there, deposit on the lower airways. You see, it goes very far uh, from the trachea. But for nano size particle, physics is different, you know it. So because the nano size particle, they follow the Brownian motion. So the Brownian motion is totally different than the micron size particles, okay? It looks like a, uh, it's a rice pop. We are doing rice pop as going here and there. So that means when our smallest, smaller particles are here, they just pop and go here and there. They don't follow, they diffuse. So when they come to the boundary, there's a deposit here. So that's why you see, although the smaller particles should go here, but they are depositing here, all right? So now the question is, when you design any drug, for example, our uh, inhaler that for asthma patients, so this particle size is very, very, very critical. So we have to think a lot, which size particles, why do we want to send? We want to send to the deeper areas or upper areas. So that we have to do a lot of work for that one. So this is the physics. If we understand the physics, we can easily optimize the size of the particles for drug delivery. So this is the polydispersed particle. So that means we use from one micron size particle to 10 micron size particle. And then we, we just solve one problem. So it, this, this took actually a long time for the, for solve this problem. And this paper we published in, uh, in Nature, that um, scientific report, uh, this, this one. So uh, this is the just polydispersed particle, not the monodispersed particle. And from here, what he got, we just, for the particle diameter from one to 10, what you did there, and the deposition uh, efficiency, and then we got very carp feeding, right? We got very, very carp feeding for right, left, and total. It's, it's a very nice carp feeding. So that means, so if we want to do like a particle diameter of 11 or 12 or 13 micron, we can easily get the results from this equation. 
And this one, we just added only the mouth. It is not nose, only the mouth. And we did a little bit of uh, research, but we did not publish anywhere. So uh, we didn't like the geometry actually. So that's why I just uh, got the new geometry recently. We, did, we developed this geometry. So this is another application. Why I'm muted. Uh, so this is um, uh, for the drug del delivery purpose. So um, here what we did is, as you know that if we um, uh, inhale a lot of drug, every drug has some side effect. So to reduce the side effect, we should do some targeted drug delivery. So this is targeted delivery. What we have done is we just uh, designed the drug using some magnetic uh, particle. And that magnetic particle, and I put some magnet somewhere where the problem is. If you know the problem is here, you can put the magnet outside, and then the particle go there and deposit it in that, that side. Okay, so these are the uh, application. One of my uh, master's student, uh, she worked in this, in this project. So now, the research we do, every research should have impact, all right? So without impact, if we have how thousands of hundreds of uh, publications, it does not mean anything. If our research does not make any difference, if our research uh, does not make any change in our society, so our research is not meaningful. So that's why we, we do research to get some impact. Okay. So this is our recent work. Uh, we, uh, we just designed uh, a particle, which is very similar to the coronavirus particle size. And then we did, uh, did a very, very in-depth research. And we just tried to find out how far it can travel to the lower airways. And it recently published uh, in uh, physics of fluids and we got uh, huge uh, media coverage. And uh, so about 25 international media, they just published our work and they are very excited with uh, this work. So that actually motivating us to do some further, uh, further research in this field. So based on that on, we, we another paper recently accepted by uh, Physics of Fluids. So that is for the drug delivery. So they are drug delivery and we, we use very uh, realistic inhalation condition uh, for, the, um, uh, for the drug delivery in our lung. And this, this work, um, our, Chief editor consider this is one of the best paper in their journal. And uh, they invited, uh, they just put our paper to the, uh, as a feature article. And also uh, they invited some journalists to take my interview and they produce uh, a news a news here, but it is uh, under embargo. They did not publish yet because the paper is still not published yet. So they took my interview and they wrote the news and sent to us to uh, proofread whether everything all right or not. So, uh, and, uh, but they're supposed to publish this paper by 9th July, but they advised me that they, would, they will publish 9th of August after one month. So anyway, so this news is still not published and this paper is still not published. And this is our internal uh, UTS. They also took my interview and they, are, uh, they prepared this news. So now uh, time is limited. So I'm going, going very quickly. Uh, to some my other uh, application of uh, this this particle, so that is, is is different. That is our CFD, but this is this one is not uh, CFD. This is the we use molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, how this a uh, drug or drug particle or the uh, like uh, dust particle or any other particle that harmful for us, how they interact with the lung surface. So that that is this. So you can see here, this is our lung, this is our alveoli, that what I said, that is the 30, uh, 23rd generation. So after 23rd generation, we have the alveoli like that. So this is the very, uh, if you take the cross section, we can see this is in, inside the alveoli, okay? So in the alveoli, we have that, that is called the lipid monolayer. That is the first layer that can protect, protect our lung, okay? So any particles go here and they hit this wall, and then they, uh, they go for like they make through ciliary clearance, they, they clear from here. But if they can't, then they uh, penetrate into this here. 
all right so this is the area where we, uh, the, all the diffusion happened our um, oxygen and carbon dioxide transportation happened everything happened here so if we just take a cross section the lipid monolayer from here and we take this like a, uh, see what is inside this uh, lipid monolayer then we can see see here we have about 92% of lipid and we have also some protein we have also this kind of dppc 41% so this kind of component are here and this is we just when you inhale and exhale so this monolayer actually uh, work like this way so what happened when the particle interact with this lung surface all right so i don't want to go so this is some disease when the disease happen yeah so I don't want to go in very details. I know some of you are doing this molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me later on. But this is, we are using Gromax software and we are using like the coarse grain uh, molecular dynamic simulation. It is not the real uh, uh, real atomic scale. It is, a, it is a bit larger scale. We are taking like three or four molecules together to make some coarse graining. We are doing the coarse graining so that we can solve a larger problem, not a very tiny little problem. Okay, so this is the, our system design. And I want to give you uh, like this way. So what happened is when one particle, it's a gold nanoparticles, when one gold nanoparticle interact with the lung surfactant, when like a nine gold particle, when 16 or when 36 particles, how, when they interact, what happened to our lung surfactant? So that, that is what we uh, try to uh, solve here. So now we can see if we have like a larger particle, if the particle concentration is higher, then the problem happened. We can see some pore formation happen. So that's only that time they damage our lung surfactant. You can see how the single particles, the single gold nanoparticles, how they interact with this, all the lipid, and uh, there is no protein here. So how they, uh, they interact with this, um, the component of the lung, lung surfactant, okay? They are not penetrating here. They don't have those energy though, so that they, they penetrate through this lung surfactant. Now, this is a, a nine uh, uh, particles still is okay. Is, is nothing happening. They are just, just interacting. Uh, then we have uh, 16 particles, still no pore is forming, but when we have uh, 36, then you can see the pore is forming here. All right, because these uh, head groups and tail groups, they are interacting with these um, uh, gold nanoparticles so that, and that actually making this kind of uh, pore here, that actually damaging our lung surfactant. So that part, that is the interaction of uh, particles and the lung surfactant. So this is the third project. So third project is the mucociliary clearance. So the, we are inhaling particles every day. Where it is going? I said 222 million particles we are inhaling per day. Where they are going? That is the mucociliary layer. You can see all our lung under the mucus layer, we have some like uh, uh, brush-like uh, structure underneath the, this um, uh, mucus. And that actually moving, it is like a one-way movement. So they are taking here and going back and doing that all the time they are doing this. So that means it is going always up here, all the particles, the mucus is coming here. And that's why every couple of seconds, what we are doing is we are actually eating like this. You can see, feel, if you don't do it, but you feel something itchy here. So you have to eat it. So that's why every time is coming here and we are eating it. So that is that the way our lung is clear. They are clearing whole day. They are working like this way. So this is the this is the way this cilia is moving. Okay, so this is a very nice structure. So what we did is we try to find out this kind of movement from the experiment, and then we apply this movement to our modeling, and then we try to find out how this uh, how this um, mucus is moving. Uh, there is a very nice uh, what is it called is movie here, and I don't think that we have time to show to show it how this, the, this actually works. So this is the uh, mucus layer, all the particles, bacteria, everything coming and just uh, here. And we have underneath, I'm going very fast here. Yeah. This is the cilia. All right, all right. So how many minutes, Noman? 
We're almost done. We have more time. All right. So you can see now that they are multiplying. Okay. And now this is the mucus layer on top of this. This is the water layer. That's the mucus layer. And now we can see the particle. Now the particle come here. Yes. Advance. So you see, this is moving one way. Now you can see the speed. So yeah, so that is the real speed. That is the happening in our uh, lung all the time. So this is the speed. So we have some realistic, realistic. Uh, here, so this is the realistic lung. This is the cilia. This is this is happening. All right. So and this is what we try to do: the three D cilia bit motion. It is a three D motion, as you can see here. And this is a 2D, it's only if they have a little bit problem, they have like this. And if they have problem, they cannot actually bend. They are moving like that, is nothing is happening. So these three kinds of things we are doing. And it's still a um, long way to go. This is not, uh, uh, we are just trying. We could not get good results from here yet. So that's it for our um, uh, lung modeling. So this is all my other heat transfer. Uh, problem we uh, we did and we are still doing. Okay, so we are working some PCM modeling, phase change material for storage of energy, and this is uh, also some particle in interacting in the heat exchanger. This is the uh, application for our attic shape building, and this is the heat sink. All right, and this is the another very nice biological problem, a biomedical problem, the red blood cell. How when they goes to the capillary, you see how they deform through this one. So this is, uh, we have done and we have, we got very good funding for this project from Australian government. And we successfully finished this, uh, this project, but still we can do a lot of work on this field. And this is the one I already did. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Shah. Uh, this is a very, very interesting presentation. Uh, uh, really liked uh, the scope and the application of your work. So now we will uh, open the session for the Q&A. So please post your question here and I'll uh, convey the question to the speaker. So uh, Shotujit has a question, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I, I I just wanted to uh, thanks. I mean that's an awesome talk, uh, one of the best keynote talk I have ever heard. Uh, I would like to ask one question. So uh, there was one one slide you showed some graph with some equations. Uh, yes. You try to uh, you try to fit it and uh, try to put those in equation. So my question is, uh, can we make a general form of that equation? I'm asking this because uh, you know nowadays people are using machine learning stuff. So I believe you have enough data that you can fit a machine learning model and come up with a generalized equation for the system. Yeah, this one, uh, yeah. the left one I'm talking about. So Thank is you. there any way uh, instead of having this individual uh, equation, can we make a generalized one? Yeah, that this one is the generalized on this one. This is on the total. Okay. This, one is this the is for the left, right, and this is the total. I see. I see. Yeah. yeah, that is very important topic. Now I'm actually thinking, how can we uh, yeah. interact? I mean, use the AI with our with our research. So that is that is very important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That that was my question. Thank you. Thank you. So we have one question from uh, Mahmoud Islam and. Uh, he was saying, is there any potential application uh, of this research in COVID-19 medical treatment? 
and then we put it in application of the research. Yeah, that's what I presented and we, we published on paper. And there are actually two. One is that um, we try to find out, we know the particle size for COVID-19. What happened is we have, so previously we thought that COVID is actually spreading through a droplet. So the droplet cannot go more than 1.2, 1.5 or two meter. That's why our social distancing in, is it two meter here in Australia. And I think all over the world, they are following this rule. But recently what we found is no, not only the uh, droplet, but the aerosol, aerosol particle is now taking place, especially for this Delta variant. So this, uh, 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 this aerosol, aerosol size is smaller, very, very smaller than uh, that droplet. So this aerosol can travel up to 10 meters from here. So that's why our recent um, spread in, uh, in Melbourne, they found that they could not find from where this actually spread. And they found that it actually came from the, uh, from the quarantine hotel, from the window. So it came from the window and it went outside. So that's why what we did is we tried to find out the size of the, um, this coronavirus particles is about 120 or 130 nano uh, meter size particles. So that size we investigated and we just try to find out where those particles actually going, how far they can go. So that why that paper was very interesting and we got very good uh, uh, media attention. Okay, so, and the another one is like the, the nasal um, uh, spray of this COVID-19 vaccine. Because their, their thinking is, as I said before, every medicine has side effects. So when you're taking the needle uh, vaccine, it is going everywhere in our body. But if we can protect our lung, why are those uh, coronavirus particles are going uh, locally? So that's why we want to locally protect our lung using this inhaler. So that's why China already applied for uh, permission to use it for human and uh, Singapore National University, they already finished all the trial. So they, were, they maybe will get permission very soon. So our work is to get some information, more information, how we can uh, improve further. So I don't see any more questions. Uh, so I'd like to ask uh, a question to the speaker. Uh, so this was a, a very interesting uh, talk and I agree with you, Pujit, like one of the best uh, keynote uh, talk I've ever seen. Uh, uh, my question is uh, kind of what happened in the background. So typically in uh, seminars or conferences for uh, simulation talks, we actually focus on machine solver schemes and these things, but a lot of the effort goes uh, to the CAD generation, domain generation and post-processing. And most of the work you have presented here, we can actually in, uh, implement those findings because of excellent post-processing. So uh, I'd like to ask, uh, what kind of effort you actually have put to get the get that realistic respiratory pathway that you uh, get the data from India and China and combined to create the cat generation? If you just briefly explain. All right, all right. So that means you are talking about the simulation, like how we did the simulation, the realistic, not the geometry. Yes, uh, as I said, the geometry is very tough. That what I said is very very hard. So people wants to do some research, but they don't get this kind of uh, geometry. So that is very challenging. So, but in terms of CFD, we try to get the, all the realistic condition, but still uh, it is the, the, the work I presented here, all like uh, we release the particles just only once. It's not like inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation. All right, just only once. It's inhale and see how far it can go. So that is the one all the people now doing. And uh, my new, geometry I found, that is my new challenge is, I want to apply the realistic inhalation condition. As you know, that inhalation condition is very, very complex. It is not a sinusoidal function. It is a, it is a very complex. And we already derived the equation for that. It's a very complex equation. How it goes, like uh, we inhale and we pause sometime and then exhale and again we pause sometime. So that means it's a very complex mathematical uh, equation. So we, we did that and uh, one of my PhD students, she's uh, applying for other case, she's working on the alveolar. But for this realistic, that full 
uh, geometry we want to apply like uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, boundary condition. We just uh, yesterday we solved on the problem and now it is running in the, in the, in the machine. So hopefully next time we can get it. Although some researchers, they, they, they comment that the inhalation, exhalation, this kind of things does not affect too much for uh, the particle deposition because on the particle is deposited, is nothing, nothing in there. But I, I believe that particle actually when you inhale, exhale, particle also in that airways, is just go up and down. So in that time, they can also deposit. So that's what we want to see. So that's why we want to apply some realistic breathing condition because we have very good computing facilities here. So we want to do it, although it will take long time for the simulation. Thank you very much, Dr. Shah, uh, for the answer. So uh, I don't see, uh, okay, I see one more question here and the question was asked by uh, Praveer Ghosh and his question is, I ask you, Dr. Shah, what regression model was performed to fit the data on the polydispersed particle uh, deposition efficiency? What regression model? It is like the carpet. It is not a regression. It's a very carpeting, very um, using Excel. We just carpet. It, it, uh, it's a polynomial equation. It's a third degree polynomial equation, x to the power three. Is not any. We did not do very uh, uh, like this kind of regression analysis or anything. We just use. Yeah, I know he's a statistician. <laughs> we just use very um, simple one. Just right click and do the car fitting and use the polynomial third degree. When we found that in third degree, the R square value is uh, almost 100%. This is 0 0.998. So that's why it fit very well. I would add, uh, like to add a little bit here. So is there any physical insight why this is uh, third uh, cube? I mean, uh, cube polynomial here? I don't know. I don't know because that is the, it's fit very well. So I don't know. Uh, we, we did not get any kind, this kind of equation anywhere. So that is the first time we, we, we just got this equation. We just okay. thought, let's see how, what, what, what happened. And then we just got this equation and we like it very much uh, that this equation can, we can use it. Maybe not the left side, but for the right side, because left side is have nano size particle. And if it is smaller nano size particle that will be dominated by Brownian motion. And it may not, it, this equation may not be applicable there. But on the right side, the larger particle, this equation will be valid. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shah, for your uh, talk. I don't see any more question. Uh, and we are also at the end of our time. Uh, there are one more question, Noan Bhai. Sure. Uh, so there's a question from Pitam Nag. So uh, he's asking, have you checked any geometrical effect on the result? Yes, that is very good question, Pitam. Um, because of the realistic geometry and the, um, uh, the idealized geometry, you see the idealized geometry I showed you before. That is the wall is very, very smooth. So the particle that time we found that the particle actually deposit mostly on the cardinal angle, the bifurcation region. But for the realistic one, the surface is not uh, smooth. Surface has lot of, lot of like a bending effect. So that bending effect actually uh, participate for more particle deposition. So that uh, it has a very, very like uh, argumented things. We found that, that uh, for realistic one is there. And then when we wrote the paper, we wrote like particle is depositing everywhere, not only the cardinal angle. So we had a very long fighting with the reviewers and at the end, the reviewer accepted our paper that this is the realistic geometry, actually particle almost deposit everywhere. Although more particle deposit on the cardinal angle, but everywhere due to uneven surface. So that's why geometric, of course, geometric uh, uh, effect is there. Very, very, very strong. And not only that, now we are, what we are doing is we are showing some aging effect. For example, 50 years, 60 years, uh, 70 years of old, their lung diameter actually changes every 10 years, 10 centimeters. So uh, that that also has some geometric effect. So that is our one of our PhD students is working on that. So I did not present that, that work here. That, that is very also very interesting thing. 
So there's one more question uh, from Chandan Kumar. Uh, the yeah. question is, uh, did you investigate the targeted drug delivery using magnetic field? Yes, yes, we did. Uh, uh, did you investigate the targeted drug delivery using magnetic field? Yes, yes, Chandan, we did. Uh, we did it. And uh, we published actually one book chapter and on, 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 on uh, journal articles. Yes, we did it uh, using ANSYS, ANSYS software, not the console, because I know Chandan likes the console. <laughs> Any more questions? So we are slightly over our time. If we don't have any more questions, I'd, I'd like to thank the speaker and the attendees uh, for uh, joining this session and uh, uh, participate here. Thank you very much. Here. So we have one last question. So maybe I'll allow that. Uh, uh, so the question is, for drug delivery, what particle size do you use? Uh, please answer briefly. Yes, this one is, is a very interesting that I showed in my, if you, Pitam, I'll send you this paper to you. And this is a very interesting work. We recently accepted, it's not published yet, uh, that drug delivery one. Uh, which one is that? Just, yeah, this, uh, no, next one. This one. Computational evaluation of drug delivery in human respiratory tract. So here we optimize it. The particle size, we actually optimize this particle size. So that is for the inhaler design and also the particle size and also the, uh, the, uh, the flow rate because flow rate also take a lot of part for drug delivery. So in this paper, we investigated extensively uh, what type of particle, which size of particle and uh, what will be the flow rate and the combination of these things we can release the, I mean, we can send the particles in the targeted area over the deep area airways. So I can send this paper to you, Pritam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shah, uh, for answering the question. So uh, we are uh, going over the time and uh, we cannot take any more questions. Thank you everyone for your questions. So those, wonder, those are wonderful questions. And thank you, Dr. Shah, for answering them. Uh, we are going for a brief break and we'll be back with the following sessions uh, at, uh, after 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting this very interesting, very young, all young researchers here. And I'll be very, very happy if anybody wants to like uh, any information from me or anybody wants to collaborate with me. I'm very open to all. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, so we will start our next session in uh, seven minutes. So those will be our student sessions. But uh, you can take a break. Uh, but I would like to take some advantage of this break time. So I know there are a lot of uh, undergraduate student attending this session. And uh, maybe I, I want to ask uh, Dr. Shah this question uh, to, if you can briefly give some idea about graduate study in, in your university or Australia, how it works and uh, how our undergraduate student can prepare for that uh, in this break 